Flaster Greenberg presents New Jersey's Site Remediation Reform Act, a practical approach. This program was recorded November 18, 2009 at Flaster Greenberg's Conference Center in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. In this segment, Mitchell Kisner, a shareholder of Flaster Greenberg, introduces the program and describes the sequence of the panel discussions. Thank you everybody for being here. Uh, this morning we're going to be hearing speakers discuss the new uh, Site Remediation Reform Act. Uh, you will hear all of the details and many of the implications of that statute. Uh, speaking will be my fellow shareholders, Janet Cole, Donna Urban, Franklin Riesenberger, and Marty Judge, and also uh, Pat Penders and Kathy Stetzer from Rue. The uh, statute was passed as a result of an acknowledgement of a failure. The existing um, law, the existing system on, on site remediation ha has simply fallen into disrepair. There are too many sites. The DEP does not have sufficient manpower to handle those sites and uh, something had to be done. There's an issue as to whether this statute is going to help, though, or, or harm uh, the situation. And as we go through the speakers, I want you to ask yourself that. Is this doing more bad than good? Uh, you'll see that the statute dramatically alters the relationship between the consultant and the client. And there'll be a lot of discussion on that. Uh, We'll talk about conflicts of interest between the consultant and the client. It used to be that the, client, that the consultant was your advocate, your proponent with the DEP. Uh, the consultant now is a um, surrogate for the DEP, and, and the relationship, therefore, is extremely different. The LSRP determines the extent to which contamination should be investigated and the form of the uh, remediation which is appropriate. And it's the LSRP which issues the closure document known as an RAO, subject to a DEP review for a period of three years. And in certain circumstances, they can go well beyond three years in reviewing it. And the implications of that will be discussed uh, substantially at this uh, seminar what you have to do uh, in order to protect a purchaser during the three-year uh, time period that the DEP can step in and uh, rescind or modify an RAO. There's uh, some, some issues that uh, you should think about. Is the, is the Site Remediation and Reform Act unrealistically designed. It might be geared only to those sites where the responsible party is able to fund the remediation out of its own pocket or with the help of government monies. And we'll talk about that during this seminar. Is this statute realistic for those uh, responsible parties that don't have any money or who have to sue uh, responsible parties to get money? or their insurance companies. You'll see that there's a, a load of fees, sanctions, and all kinds of extra expense built into this uh, system. And getting to the conflict of interest issue, can a system prove uh, effective and workable where the responsible party is required to pay for his enemy? The uh, LSRP can become the enemy of the client. Uh, so. As we go through this, we'll discuss these issues. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this program brought to you by Flaster Greenberg. For more information, call 856-661-1900 or visit flastergreenberg.com. This program was produced by Professional Podcasts in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. 
on the web at professionalpodcasts.com. For Flaster Greenberg, this is Steve Lubetkin. Thank you for joining us and take good care.